Hey, everybody. This is H&D Abroad. I'm Herman. And I am D. So we are, um, we're in Sevilla and thought we would do a quick recording about our arrival and departure at the Marrakesh Airport. So Correct. we want to um, start off by reminding you, thank you, thank you, thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. We um, want to reach more people, so um, engaging us in that way. If you are joining us on the replay, hashtag replay, y'all, because um, we know that um, people need and want quality content, and we hope that we're giving that to you. So we're going to get right into the details by thanking the person who gave us information for this trip. Right. We want to thank Pakora Man and his video on uh, the Marrakesh Manara Airport Arrivals Guide. Yes. Uh, we will put a link to that uh, in the description so you can check that out for yourself. It's pretty just a straightforward guide. We'll kind of also be giving you our experience about that process today. Okay, so we're going to uh, group the information by um, uh, arrivals, departure, um, and then we'll actually talk about um, our the airline that we took when we departed the Marrakesh Airport. So um, that you have a little bit. We're going to do a separate video on um, the airline that that we flew with um, when we came to. Uh, this part of the world. So let's get started. All right. All right. So when you arrive at the airport, you get dropped off, you walk into the doors, unlike at home when you just walk into the airport and walk to your kiosk, at the beginning of the door is security. Um, when we arrived. Oh, right. Yeah. You so arrived. you've got um, the, um, you've got a passport checkpoint. So we are giving you, let's see, the view of what it's like to arrive late. Oh, right. Yeah, so our um, our airline, uh, we arrived at about 9.45, 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So um, we weren't exactly sure what was going to be open or not. So th that's why we thought this might be helpful. So yeah, we, we went through the, the passport checkpoint and then you are right where the baggage claim is. So that was super simple. And baggage was already coming through. Going through the passport checkpoint was, was quick. It wasn't a long delay. And baggage was already on the turnstile, moving through, coming off from off of the airline when we got there. So within a few brief moments uh, between departing the plane, making it through the passport uh, checkpoint, we already had our bags in hand. Yeah, so we knew that we were not gonna get um, funds until we got into the country. And there are two choices that you have. You can use the um, the exchange, mm -hmm. the, currency, the currency exchange kiosk, which is literally right in front of the baggage claim, or you can choose to use the um, there are a few ATMs just outside of the exit area. So once you exit um, the uh, arrivals section and you go through those doors that you cannot go back in, then um, the ATMs are there. So I traveled with a really large group. The Exodus Summit um, meetup was in Marrakesh. So um the ladies literally described where to find the ATMs, but also another tip, bring more than one either debit card or credit card that you can get cash. Because mm -hmm. there, um, one person mentioned that, you know, one of their credit union cards did not work, but um, another card did. So that was really helpful. Um, to make sure that we brought several forms of, you know, being able to mm -hmm. to get cash out just in case um, one one form of, um, you know, one form we weren't able to 
mesh with the, you know, the Morocco, um, I think it was called Bank of Africa Bank. Um, there are several different uh, kinds, but yeah, I just thought we would um, share that. So, so once you leave and yeah. you've gotten your cash, if you need to get, get your, um, your Duras there, the next um, small adventure begins. Yeah. Because when you walk outside, there's the pickup area. And um, when you walk outside, there's a group of uh, usually gentlemen or yeah. pickup guys who are there who who are in just general semi-circle with the sign saying, um, we're here to pick you. We're here to pick up such and such person for this hotel or for that Riyadh or, or for this location. If you've prearranged a pickup, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's that's a pretty organized area. They're there with the signs, waiting for the people that pick up. They make their contact. Um, once you move past that area, if you have not prearranged your ride, so our ride. Yeah, so our ride did not come. So we tried come. to book with the hotel to have someone there, but that's okay because we walked right up up to the, the parking lot area, mm -hmm. and you run into the the taxis consortium, <laughs> and uh, it's a lively group of people who would love to give you a ride. And uh, we actually had a gentleman who helped uh, org orchestrate. Yeah, so it seemed like there was like one central person that he asked, do you need a ride? How many people are there? And then the, the taxi drivers negotiated who would get the opportunity to, right. um, to provide the assistance. The tip we want to share is... Do not get in the taxi before you are aware of what they're wanting to charge you and you, if necessary, have negotiated that price. And yes, it can be negotiated because otherwise you'll get to the point where you're, you're going to stay and you've spent, they will require, request more money of you sometimes than is necessary for the trip that you made. So find out before you get in the vehicle and you can decide whether or not you feel that's a that's a, a, fair, a price. fair price, a reasonable price. But yeah. do that before you get in the vehicle. And they're pretty good. And our taxi driver was respectful. And and he got us to our location in a timely manner. Absolutely. Uh, we didn't feel unsafe driving a taxi <laughs> like some places. So yeah. it, was, it was a decent ride. There is no Uber where we were. Correct. So make sure that there are those kinds of services available to you in some of the locations that you're going to, the lifts, the Uber, the all the ride other kinds of ride yeah. chairs. Make sure those are available to you where you're going because local uh, transportation may all may be only what's available to you. Absolutely. So yeah, so that was our arrival experience um, at um, uh, Marrakesh Manar Airport. So we're going to talk to you about what it was like to go through um, the departure. So we arrived at the airport. I would not arrive at the airport any later than three hours. Agreed. We actually did four hours in advance and felt that that was a really good amount of time. Yeah, it, so It actually wasn't intentional. It was a part of you know the process of where we were moving it ended up being beneficial because of the process of what was going on. So I've taken it, I've taken it for granted um, because I've not done a lot of international travel that you will have access to a kiosk, that it's at no charge to print off your ticket when you get to the airport because we just, we were in a new place. Mm -hmm. um, Wherever you are, tip, pro tip, I'm going to start calling them pro tips. So the pro tip is it, wherever you have the strongest internet before you get to the airport, download your boarding pass, yeah. download the, um, the airline app, mm -hmm. because you could wind up paying a whole lot of money just to have access to that boarding pass. 
So yeah, try to have it printed off before you get to the airport or at least download the app and go in and check in before you get to the airport so that you avoid some of the fees mm -hmm. that we almost had to pay. We were really thankful for that time buffer because we were at the airport, on the airport mm -hmm. internet, which is only available for, for about three, three hours. hours every two days. So if you have run out of your, um, yeah, it, it could cause a, a little bit of a disaster. Right. So just kind of know it's not a super strong, but it was strong enough to get done the things that we got done. So thank you, um, Marrakesh Menar Airport for having that available. Okay. Yeah. So we get to the airport. Yeah. So it was a reasonable transition. We get to the door. This is where I started earlier. <laughs> and there is a security checkpoint at the door. So before you go in, they have you run your baggage through the uh, electronic scanner before you enter the airport. And you walk through a scanner before you enter the airport. That's the first security checkpoint on your way out of the country into their airport. Mm -hmm. um, once you've cleared that, uh, the next most important thing is if you're looking for your your ticket gate, mm -hmm. your ticket counter. You need when you come to the airport in wherever you live, Texas or Florida. You're going to go to the Delta counter. You're going to go to the American Airlines counter. You're going to go to the Southwest counter. In the Marrakesh Manara Airport, you're going to see two boards that are important for making decisions. One is your typical departure board. It tells you the flights that are leaving, usually within the next three hours. That's all that information that you can get on that board. The second board that you're going to look for is the check-in board. The check-in board identifies not only your airline, your flight, your flight number, but it also tells you what gate, uh, what, what counter. ticket counter to go to to check in and what gate you're going to go to. That information is only available three hours prior to your flight. Around the, uh, the left, far left side of the airport and the far right side of the airport are numbered stations. Those numbered stations are not dedicated to an airline. They'll put their sign the, in front about three hours before your flight and start checking baggage right. and checking tickets right there. Right over the top of each station is a general no. Marrakesh screen that just mm -hmm. says International Airport. It changes to identify. So if you're flying Turkish Air or British Easy Airways Jets. or EasyJet or Ryanair, Tap, mm -hmm. Tap Air, you need to know which kiosk you need to go to for your flight because there only may be two people at, the, at two stations that may be your airline in that space. And the other part of the airline might be in a whole other part of the airport check-in. There is no general area for your airline. So make sure you check the check-in board, which is usually centered uh, in the center of the, of the, behind, of the behind foyer you, area. Before you, but when you right first behind, walk in the door. Yeah, where you do that security check checkpoint. Security checkpoint. Yeah, so, all right, so we've got that checkpoint. Once you have gone to your counter, you've checked in, mm -hmm. you've gotten your boarding pass um, and any other passes that, um, any other notations that need to be made on your pass, mm -hmm. then you will go up, up the ramp and through the next security checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, where they will ask you to show your passport and your boarding pass. Um, that, that is your passport checkpoint out of the country. Um, and then we did another check. And then, you, and then you immediately put whatever additional baggage you're carrying with you through the next security scanner. Correct. And you walk through another scanner. So there's the one at the main door. There's your baggage at your check-in. Then there's your <laughs> security uh, checkpoint. Uh, and they and they direct you based on um, your boarding pass and your gate. Mm -hmm. So there were people at that central place 
who immediately went to a checkpoint, we were directed upstairs. Correct. And upstairs, we, <coughs> excuse me, we passed through and went to our gate upstairs. So there are three, or is it two, two to three checkpoints, depending on where you are headed mm -hmm. and which airline you are flying and potentially where you're going. Yeah. Um, so that's something you should be aware of. Keep your boarding pass and your passport in your hand. Yeah. I kept putting mine away. And, and then had to bring it back out. To bring it back out <laughs> until you are at your gate. And even then, if your flight, because once your flight leaves again, they're going to check your boarding pass and your passport. They're going to ask you if you have on a mask. We tend to wear masks in the airports and mm -hmm. in the airplane to take your mask off so they can see you at, at the passport checks at the Same. security checks, yeah, all of those. They want to see who you are. They want to look at your face. They want to see your passport and your boarding pass. Even when they tear your pass and yes. they give you the little piece, keep, keep that, little that piece. Yes, especially when you are on, when you're coming in. I forgot to mention that mm -hmm. um, on the arrivals. They want to see that um, right. that boarding pass slip when you're coming into the country right. on your arrival to the Marrakesh Manara airport. So they, they want to verify that you are supposed to be on that flight and that you are allowed to come into the country. So, yeah, so we the last point that we wanted to make about the airport was about the food options for the departure. So they've got kiosks that I think are available to the arrival and departure mm -hmm. sides. What we were not prepared for was once we, you know, um, went through all of those security checkpoints on our departure flight here to Spain, there were really limited food options, mm -hmm. really, really limited. So it was kind of pizza, sandwiches, it's, Japanese it's, food. They're prepackaged sandwiches and, 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 and pizzas that are pre-made that they pop into the, into the toaster system. So there was a Hudson, what is it called? Yeah. Yeah, that's like where you can, the, yeah, that you can buy things. What we were not ready for was that everything was in euros. So once you pass the security checkpoint um, from Marrakesh, then everything is euros yeah. um, at, at, for the gate that we went through. So yeah, just want to make sure that you're thinking about what your options options and opportunities are if you want to bring something in or or just be ready yeah that that kicked the price up because the euro is definitely stronger um than the uh the currency in marrakesh sure. in morocco so you want to keep in mind where how you spend your money on both sides Absolutely. so yeah so just look Quick overview, we had a one hour, 15 minute flight mm -hmm. with Ryan Air there. We, <laughs> we did our, um, we purchased our tickets mm -hmm. online, Correct. had a little trouble with the app, um, but we were able to, to get a reasonably priced ticket within a week mm -hmm. of, um, of traveling um, to Spain. So that was that was super simple. We got confirmation and an emailed itinerary. Yes, but you need, even though it doesn't say to download the boarding pass, we mentioned, please download it, um, you know, before you get to the airport. Um, and because if you don't, it was over 1,000. What, what happened was that we never got a check-in notice. Like most of your airlines are sending you, you can, it's now time to check in. We didn't get that notice. Uh, we didn't get an encouragement to to uh, download the app. So we figured we had to check in at the airport. We got to our assigned kiosk desk and she said, I need to see your boarding pass. So we showed her the email. And she said, no, you need a boarding pass and you're gonna have to pay for it. Now we're trying to figure out whatever. She says, she pointed us to this Swiss port Yes. Swiss port kiosk said you need to go over there and talk to them. So we're thinking, okay, maybe we just need to move over to that area. So we go over to the Swiss port, which was connected to the Ryanair information. And the young lady told us it was going to cost us. 
It was over 1,000. Euros. No. Was it euros? Yes, 1,000 euros. Yes. To print a boarding pass. No, ma'am. So we stepped out of line <laughs> <laughs> on the limited international airport uh, internet that we told you about earlier. We downloaded the app. Uh, well, actually, that didn't work either. Yeah, we, we tried to the, download we the went app. went into the website, yeah. logged in because Dee had done that when she uh, established the flights. And I was able to um, download the boarding to down, passes to do the check in for us and download the boarding pass. They had to go back to the Swiss port <laughs> desk. She acknowledged because you have to start at the Swiss port, Swiss port desk regardless whether you have downloaded the, uh, the boarding pass or not. We go back to the Swiss port boarding uh, check uh, desk and she gave us a receipt showing that we had our downloaded boarding passes. Walk back to the kiosk, back to the young lady. She got the receipt from the Swiss port lady, handed us our boarding passes. Thank God. And then we were able to make our way through all the security we just mentioned to you. Yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, make sure that you're paying attention to the weight. Mm -hmm. um, so because we were on um, Turkish Air that we mentioned before, their weight limit and the number of bags that you can check was different from Ryan Air. And so we had to make, you know, some adjustments to um, how we packed because of because of that. So um, I would be super cautious if you were a team um, carry on, make sure that you you know that you are paying attention to the weight for each airline because they can be different and the carry-ons typically you carry on a bag that's you know book bag size or decent you know yes. duffel bag no, you they, do not get a personal item no the, you have one item the so bag, the bag they want you to carry is a small very small very small it, it was like 10 10 kilograms but or something but like that. But even more than that, they want it to be collapsible. Mm -hmm. they, they were Compact trying to, get to, to go under the seat. Small section. Yeah. So we get, on the, we get on the airplane and we are able to easily put the items under the seat, but the you can tell this is a regional airline. Um, the seats were nice. The distance between the seats were nice. We did kind of do the upgraded seats. So, um, and they weren't the plushy seats, they weren't the cushioned seats, but, but they, were, they, they did really well. The whole flight was mm -hmm. really nice. It, it is a discount airline, so you know, kind of the, the spirit, mm -hmm. the, the jet blue kind of level. You walk but out you of the got tarmac to the plane, and so we're, we've up, we're uploading those, those photos so that you can see what that looks like in the videos. But yeah, that, that was just. The experience um, using Ryanair, you know, you want to be, um, you you want to be thinking about these things before you arrive at the airport while you're packing, mm -hmm. so that um, you're not mm -hmm. impacted by additional fees um, before you, um, you know, get started on your trip. Give yourself plenty, plenty, plenty of time. Yeah. So that's our review of um, the Marrakesh Manara Airport. We hope that's helpful. If you fly to Marrakesh, it's worth the trip. Oh, it's so beautiful, it's beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. So we'll have more content about uh, Marrakesh itself. I thought we'd do a specific video about the airport and the airline that we took from that beautiful airport. All right. Well, thank you for coming out. I'm Herman. I'm Dee. This is H&D Abroad. See you next time. Bye-bye.